Oh. Hello there. Hello, Internet people. Well, I'm back. Now, you might ask, who's my favorite uh, comedian? And I'd say Charlie Chaplin, you know, the man, the legend. But there's also a different fella, Jim Carrey. I made a video previously about how I like Adam Sandler. I also like Jim Carrey. Whole bunch. Like, what a guy. You know? And, um, after I did the big mysterious song hoax, I, uh, many fellas said, oh, well, your idol is, must be Jim Carrey, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm not really trying to be him. I certainly don't have a rubber face like he does, but, uh, you know, he's a funny guy. Uh, so I figured that uh, I really had to analyze, I really had to rank every Jim Carrey character top to bottom, tell you which one I think is the bottoms and which one I think is the tops, because uh, Jim Carrey's played a lot of characters over the years. Definitely a more diverse cast than Adam Sandler, so I figure I better talk about which is the best, which ones you ought to go for, which ones you ought to avoid. So, let's start. Right on the bottom is The Grinch. Uh, the Grinch is the worst of all of Jim Carrey's characters because um, I don't know. You can't even tell us Jim Carrey because he has so much makeup on and it's not better than the Benedict Cumberbatch version. The only good version of the Grinch is the original one with Boris Karloff because the Grinch is like a 20 page long book. If you try to make it two hours you're going to end up with a lot of filler. You only need it to be like 15 minutes. And the original cartoon with Boris Karloff is only 15 minutes. Uh, the Grinch is definitely the worst role of Jim Carrey. Because they obviously just hired him thinking that he could be funny, but he's not funny. It's just the Grinch, except worse. The Who's look like nightmares, and, uh, not good. Uh, definitely give this one a skip. Don't watch it. So above the Grinch but still very low on my list is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Everyone talks about what a great movie this is, uh, but in my opinion, it's, it's garbage. Because I don't expect Jim Carrey to be in some hipster, hipster dipster dramedy. I want fun and wacky antics from him. And Eternal Sunshine for Jim Carrey is a lot like Uncut Jim's for Adam Sandler. You know, I can't buy Adam Sandler going around and being a tough guy. He's the Hurley he, he's, he's the Hurley he fella, you know? So yeah, uh, give Eternal Sunshine a skip. It's not funny, and it's just bad. No matter what your idiot hipster friend will tell you, give Eternal Sunshine a skip. So then, uh, we got, um, what should we get? Uh, uh, Riddler. That's it, Riddler. Jim Carrey's Riddler is not very good. I don't prefer uh, Jim Carrey's Riddler. Because, uh, he's just too crazy. Riddler was never that crazy in the comics. He's just kind of like, oh, I want, I want to give Batman, like, fun puzzles to solve. Of course, Joel Schumacher isn't aware of this. Could Jim Carrey play a better Riddler in the future? Yeah, probably, if Todd Phillips is directing. Uh, but Batman Forever? Give it a skip. Again, not a good Jim Carrey character. Not worth a watch. Uh, and... He's, he's, again, Jim Carrey does not work well 
with characters that already exist. So then we got Ace Ventura. I never really watched Ace Ventura, but what I can tell you is it's not the best Jim Carrey movie. Like he's in it, sure, and it is his own original idea, but pretty immature movie. Uh, I never really liked it. It's not that funny. Uh, he goes overboard. It's just not, it's even less controlled than Austin Powers. So at the end of the day, Ace Ventura, uh, if you like animals, I suppose it'd be kind of fun. Uh, but is it, is it like the best Jim Carrey role? Not really. Is it's better, it's better than, uh, Riddler or Grinch, but, I mean, again, no, it's just not that, that smart. So then, above Ace Ventura, we got The Mask. Uh, I like The Mask. The Mask is pretty com it's a pretty competent movie, and I'm aware that it's based on a comic, but, I mean, it's a, very, it's a very good comic adaptation that really brings the character to the mainstream. I'd say it does for The Mask comic what Men in Black did for the Men in Black comic, you know. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't even like the comic. I just like the movie, because it's got Jim Carrey. And he's good as Stanley Ipkiss. It's a nice little underdog tale. Um, the only reason this isn't very high on the list is because, I mean, too much CGI. It's a CGI overload, and it assumes that you need CGI to make Jim Carrey funny, but you actually don't. Because uh, Jim Carrey has a very flexible face. You don't need to give him a, a cartoon tongue or cartoon eyes. He already has that. Uh, but the mask, you know... It's a pretty neat superhero story. He's a nice original superhero. I only wish there had been, like, a better sequel to it, but, uh, yeah. So, below the mask, I forgot to mention this, is, uh, The Truman Show. But, uh, I mean, I guess, I guess Truman is below Ace Ventura also. Uh, The Truman Show is one of those movies that everyone thinks is so smart, but it's really not. It's just kind of a depressing movie about a, a guy whose entire life is a civil rights violation. And, uh, you know, and Andrew Nichol, the, the smart fella, this, the, the, the whiz brain that he is, thinks he's so smart because there's a, there's a, a crazy syndrome named after his movie. And uh, that's not really a good thing, Andrew. What it actually means is your movie makes people paranoid. But I mean, I'm not paranoid from it. All I think is... It's just... Edgy. Like The Matrix. It's not good. It's not, it's not that good. And, uh... So yeah, there's between... There's above Riddler b below Ace Ventura. Uh, is, is The Truman Show. Everyone says The Truman Show is so great. It's not that good. Because... It's better to see Jim Carrey being uh, crazy despite his environment instead of being crazy as a result of his environment. Uh, the Truman Show is just depressing because it's just about him being crazy because he's been tortured for his entire life. and uh, So yeah, g give Truman a pass. Alright, so above Mask, we got Lloyd Christmas and Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber is, like, it's, it's so good. It's as good as everyone says it is. 90s comedies are a fun genre to look at, and they're very weird a lot of the time. You've got movies like The Pest with John Leguizamo. And you watch something like that today, and it feels incredibly dated and stale and old, because John Leguizamo uh, is not funny in it. But something like Dumb and Dumber is still funny 20 years later, and that says something about the great chemistry between Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, and like, by gosh, it's, a, it's the best buddy comedy movie. It's better than Thelma and Louise. Uh, you know, it's just the most classic story. You gotta see it to believe it. It, it, is, it is a 
is probably the best 90s comedy out there. Uh, well, mainstream, anywho. Uh, Jim Carrey's great, and Jeff Daniels is great. And it's very fun. And then you've got the garbage uh, prequel where neither of them are played by Jim Carrey or Jeff Daniels, and that's trash. But did you know that I was more hyped for Dumb and Dumber 2 than I was for Avengers Infinite, Infinite War? Because I don't care about the Avengers, but by gosh, I cared about Dumb and Dumber 2. It was a good movie with the Ferelli bros at the helm, and you got Jim Carrey in it, and you got Jeff Daniels in it. It, it knows how to do a sequel. That's how you do a sequel. You make it, you make the original, and then 20 years later, you go down the line, and my gosh, like, it's just the most classic stuff. Probably, I'd rank it among the top 10 movies of the last decade, uh, for sure. It was a very fun movie to see Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels back in the dog van, back at it again. And everyone, you know, they were like, oh, that's too lowbrow. There are poop jokes. First off, Dumb and Dumber 1 is the only time in cinematic history where a defecation scene uh, is even mildly amusing. But apart from that, uh, I enjoy lowbrow humor every once in a while, so I'd encourage you to watch Dumb and Dumber and watch Dumb and Dumber 2, which isn't quite as good as Dumb and Dumber, sure, but... It's very good. I mean, it's very good. It's definitely probably the best comedy film of my lifetime, because, my gosh, uh, Dumb and Dumber uh, is a phenomenon. And uh, Jim Carrey is great as Lloyd Christmas, the silly little mop, the silly little bull-cut buck-tooth fella. And, uh, you know, just, just loads of fun. Great comedy all around. But Dumb and Dumber isn't the best Jim Carrey movie. The best Jim Carrey movie is The Cable Guy, a sequel to Ferris Bueller's Day Off, starring Ferris Bueller. Uh, it is the third best movie with Ferris Bueller in it, uh, apart from Glory, which stars Ferris Bueller as Ferris Bueller's great-grandpa, uh, Colonel Robert Goldshaw. But the plot is, Ferris Bueller is done with his high school antics, and he's all grown up. But oh my gosh, suddenly Jim Carrey pops into his life, and Jim Carrey is a crazy TV man. Uh, what a plot. This is Jim Carrey at his best, because unlike in The Truman Show, where he's pathetic, he wields all the power, and it really comes through. You got his great chemistry with Ferris Bueller. Also, there's a little early cameo from Jack Black in this, and not only that, but it was directed by Ben Stiller. And I think Ben Stiller's show, The Ben Stiller Show, is probably the best sketch comedy show of the 90s, apart from uh, In Living Color and SNL. So you got, and not only that, but in this, in this, in The Cable Guy, if you can spot them, there are cameos from Andy Dick, Janine Garofalo, and Bob Odenkirk. Can you believe that? Very good. Very good movie, all around. Um, and uh, it's, just, it's just a very cool character. Jim Carrey is so good in The Cable Guy, and uh, Roger Ebert gave it a bad review, and I can't believe that, because that's back when Jim Carrey was at his peak, playing little Chip Douglas, the, the twisted little kook, and then in one part he turns into the Hulk. I'm not going to spoil it, but my gosh, that's a good dark comedy for you. But it's like a really funny dark comedy. Uh, it is great. Uh, better than Dumb and Dumber, but almost nobody knows about, uh, I mean, I mean, I assume a lot of people remember it, but it's, it's a little obscure. So yeah, Cable Guy. Best Jim Carrey movie character. But we can go beyond that. We can go past the movies and look at Fire Marshal Bill. Because you know he's the best Jim Carrey character. Even better than Chip Douglas or Lloyd Christmas, you got Fire Marshal Bill. Uh, the Wyans bros really hit it when they when they decided to hire Jim Carrey to be on In Living Color. And believe it or not, Fire Marshal Bill, interesting trivia, is the only character 
to be in all the all the seasons of in living color all the seasons straight even the the men on film sketch didn't get that honor because fire marshal bill is just so funny my gosh there needs to be a fire marshal bill movie and i've made a petition for it on chan.org but you got to go sign it and also you know like, this character needs a movie, because he's so funny. Uh, like, my gosh, he's the best Jim Carrey character. He ranks at the top, because he's just so good. That is just how good he is. Mark my words, you can watch all the Fire Marshal Bill sketches, and there are a lot. I mean, there are so many, I lose track of them. The first one, I think, is him in the classroom. And then there's all the ones in between. There's the Super Bowl one. There's a Christmas version, hospital, sushi restaurant, uh, and then cruise and honeymoon. I think those are separate. And then the last sketch, he rides a, sh a ship into the sun in a in a blaze of glory like that. That's how you do a finale. I mean, that's how you. That's that's a great line of sketches right there. Watch them all. Fire Marshal Bill needs more more attention than Lloyd Christmas or Ace Ventura, cause you know he's Fire Marshal Bill and he's got his adorable little nasally voice. And more than that, I mean all the sketches have a hundred percent practical effects. There's no junk like in the mask where you got all that CGI. The Wyans Bros had to actually put together cool effects where it would look like his arm was chopped off, or like all his fingers were chopped off, or uh, he was headless in the magic show, or, uh, you know. And also, they had to use real fire. I mean, they had to have, like, fire extinguishers on hand. That's dedication to the craft. That's dedication to a good, solid sketch. And Fire Marshal Bill, I mean, he's just the most fun, funny character. He gives my vote as the top Jim Carrey character. Yeah, so that's about it. That's that's about it for the top the top Jim Carrey characters, worst to best. Um. So yeah, like Jim Carrey. Also like Adam Sandler, but I don't know. I think I like Jim Carrey equal. Anywho, I like to make a fun little announcement. Now, you fellows out there might be wondering what to get for Christmas. I suggest some Nicholas Comics. I've got a special deal going on right now. Uh, $20, you can get any three comics of your choice. Uh, also, a customized card uh, drawn by me uh, for whoever you say. Uh, just specify who the card's for, draw it out for them. Put your name on, or you can sign, or whatnot, and uh, and three three comics that you can just read or give to someone or whatnot. Uh, this offer is only up, and it, three comics entirely your choice. And this offer is only up uh, before, prior to December twenty sixth. So I suggest you get your order in today. Anywho, that'll about do it for this review. Uh, stay stay on and. Uh, and uh, we got more content coming your way for the new year. So yeah, yeah, that's that is about it. Uh, mm -hmm.